here to explain to you a brief history of Palestine. Let's take a trip back in time. This is Palestine, or Palestine in Arabic. It is the home to many sacred religious monuments, like the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Western Wall, and the Dome of the Rock. Many Palestinians lived in rural villages and had farms with plenty of olive trees. Children woke up early in the morning, got water from the local well to bring back home, then went to school. Boys had school in the morning and girls had school in the afternoon. And when they got back, they would help out on the farm or in the house. In more urban towns, people worked in stores, in the souk or bazaar, a long strip of small shops where people would buy food, clothing, gifts, or even furniture. In their free time, women would relax in sewing circles, and men would sit outside, sipping tea or shag. Typical clothing for men looked something like this. This is a long dishtash with the hatha to cover his head, which is useful in the hot environment of Palestine. Well, on the other hand, typical clothing for women looked something like this. Beautiful hand-embroidered clothes and hijabs to cover their hair. And of course, you can't talk about Palestinian culture without mentioning the food. There are so many delicious traditional Palestinian dishes. For breakfast, falafel and hummus are common. Hummus is typically made from chickpeas. For dinner or lunch, mensef is a common meal. It is made from rice, pine nuts, and lamb, topped with lebana, which is like a yogurt sauce. And for dessert, kanafa which is a sweet, cheesy bite of heaven. In 1948, the Nakba happened. This was when Palestinians were forced out of their home and had to become refugees in surrounding countries. Mainly, they went to Jordan or Egypt, or maybe even Syria and Lebanon, depending on the area of Palestine they were from but they all had to walk hundreds of miles through the hot desert. One story that really shows how stressful and hard it was on the people is a personal story. My grandmother was about two years old when the Nakba happened. And she could walk, but obviously not those long distances. So my great-grandmother had to carry her. And my great-grandmother was also carrying all her belongings and it was hard after days of walking. It gets really tiring. So she sent my grandmother down on a rock. She wanted to leave her there and die. If it wasn't for a neighbor who came up to her and said, this is your child. You can't replace that. Your belongings, you can replace all of those things. But a child can't be replaced. So my Great grandmother picked up my grandmother again and continued walking. It's scary to think that if it wasn't for that neighbor, I probably wouldn't be alive. Some people refused to leave their homes that their ancestors had been living in for centuries, despite Israeli effort to push all the Palestinians out of Palestine. What happened to those people? Well, they were massacred. Whole towns were wiped out. So why did the Nakba happen? Why were so many Palestinians forced out of their homes? Well, the answer is complicated. But let's start with the Holocaust. The Holocaust was an awful event where thousands of Jews were killed in the most inhumane ways. After the Holocaust happened, there was a push in the Zionist movement. The Zionist movement was the desire to create a country where Jews could unite and um, practice the religion of Judaism freely. But they wanted to create that country in the land of Palestine. So while the acts of the Holocaust were unfair and inhumane, whether or not Zionists had a right to create Israel in a country that it was already existing and kick other people out of their homes to make their own seat, whether or not that's okay, that's a matter for you to decide. Yeah. So gradually, from 1948, Palestine became more of Israel and less of Palestine. 
So you might be wondering, where did the Palestinians go? Well, they spread throughout the world to many different countries. A lot of them stayed in the Middle East, though. Different countries had different reactions to the Palestinians coming into their country. Some countries were kind of harsh. For example, Libya under Gaddafi, who started passing really restrictive rules that made it hard for Palestinians to live there and make a living. For example, he made rules and laws saying that if you weren't born in Libya or if your parents weren't born in Libya, then you couldn't own property, then you couldn't you know, get the country. But other countries were more welcoming. No, they, they were very nice. Really? Very nice. They mm. were very helpful and so on. They tried to help me, uh, you know, in uh, and uh, they want to go me they want me to go in sport and uh, go with them and a lot of people invited me, even the teachers in the high school and so on, they took me for dinner <laughs> and for hot dog and uh, for for uh, ball games and things like that, really. Areas of Palestine still exist today, mainly the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. The majority of countries in the world recognize the Palestinian statehood, but some do not, including the United States. The current situation between Israel, the Gaza Strip, and the West Bank is really unfortunate, but the part that saddens me the most is how little people know about it. A lot of people don't know that there are huge walls that separate the areas between where the Palestinians live and where the Israelis live. The Israelis are living in this first world country with luxuries like internet access, TV, clean water. Meanwhile, people of Gaza and the West Bank, well, a lot of the times the Israeli government cuts off their access to medical supplies and clean water. They live in a crumbling town and they don't get any help. On top of that, getting to the wall to access, you know, school or to get to a doctor's appointment requires a lot of documentation and there's always guards guarding it. Israel and the Israeli government also frequently hurts, you know, as I said earlier, there's bombings and, you know, killings of these Palestinian people who aren't even treated like humans. The saddest part is, is that Israel has broken over 25 UN security resolutions and there's no punishment. The US gives Israel $3.15 billion every year and that amount is increasing. And we're number one on the debt list, not them. Israel is 48th on the debt list. On top of that, Business Insider says that US taxpayers contribute more to the Israeli defense budget than Israeli taxpayers. That means Americans are helping kill those innocent children in Gaza. While there are people who speak out against the atrocities happening in Gaza and the West Bank, almost all American politicians support the state of Israel while it's doing these awful things to the residents of Gaza and the West Bank. Republicans and Democrats support the state of Israel. All the presidential nominees support the state of Israel, which is why I didn't include any of the extremely graphic pictures of children after bombings, people in the hospital, because I want young kids to see this video. I want the next generation to see this video because I'm putting my hope in them. Maybe you can make a change and do what our what the older generation didn't do. Maybe you can put an end to the torture. I hope you learned something about Palestinian history and thank you so much for watching this video.